Hi, I've been watching all these YouTube videos where these people go out and they go thrifting at like um, Goodwill or Community Aid or Savers and um, oh, estate sales and garage sales and they post, you know, while they're shopping for it and then they post what they found and they do what they call a haul video. So anyway, I thought I would do the beach combers version of a haul video. So I'm going to flip this camera around because I did not set up a tripod. So this is going to be kind of interesting. So it'll be two videos, maybe three clipped together. Anyway, I'm going to go away for a second. Then I'm going to come back with the camera flipped. Okay. So here's my beach haul for today. And what they do on those other videos is they say, oh, here's what I got, here's what I paid for it, and here's what I expect to get for it. Um, I don't know really how to translate that into a beach coming video, so I'm just going to wing it. So here we have a piece of weird turquoise mesh plastic, and I don't know what it came from, but maybe it came from a like fruit bag or a beach bag. Um, what I expect to get for it is nothing. It's trash. But I might try to figure out a way to put this in a piece of resin jewelry. It's just that weird and interesting to me. So there's that. And then this is a bottle cap. I think I found several of these. My daughter's been collecting these. She has a craft project she's been doing with them, but these are really sad. Like, look at that one. You can see the rust has eaten all the way through it. But even if my daughter can't use it, it's good to get these off of the beach because, you know, it's rust and it's dirty and it's probably very capable of cutting a little kid with their little bare feet. So good to get that off the beach. And here's another one. Yeah, probably too horrible for Emily to be able to use in her arts. And then I found quite a few of these guys. I get those off the beach, too, because I'm thinking, okay, if that was flipping around in the surf and I was a fish, I might think that's like a little minnow or something with the silvery glint, and I might try to eat it. And that can't be good. This is a first. Never found one of these. That's a buckle. Don't know what I'll do with that. Probably put it in recycling because it is plastic. This was also a first. Looks like a lid to a soda or I don't know some kind of drink and it's that really flimsy plastic stuff so good to get that off the beach because that gets washed out in the ocean I think these transparent kind of flimsy things might look like jellyfish which could be a food source for some of our critters out there so check that off the beach then we had this is an interesting thing this is also the first time I found one of these and I don't know but as a survivor, I have worn a lot of things like this, hospital bracelets. This, however, does not look being bright green like a hospital bracelet to me. This looks like it was probably an event bracelet or maybe even a cruise ship bracelet for like, oh, you're allowed in the deep end of the pool or you're allowed in the water slide or whatever. I don't know. I've never been on a cruise. But anyway, found that on the beach, took it off, plastic, not good found this guy on the beach. Wait for it. Ha ha. Isn't he a cute little fella? And he was like almost in pristine condition. So I'm thinking some little kid who had his bag of toys or beach bag or whatever out on the beach dropped him. This is where I'm putting my little pile of treasures that we talk about. Um, going through here. Oh, this was a first. I've never found one of these before. The evils of vaping, people. One, this piece this piece right here is glass. Then there's this little rubber tip thing that I'm sure inserts into something. And then this little screwed piece that probably fits into something. And then you have a vape canister. I don't know if this was a nicotine one or a THC one or a CBD or whatever. But these are so bad for you, people. Um, they, the stuff that you're inhaling is one thing I read said glycerin, 
And to me, that's just kind of like, okay, I'm going to coat an oxygen exchange organ in my body with, like, lotion. I think all those little pores that absorb oxygen probably wouldn't be able to do it very well if you coated them with glycerin. So anyway, not good for you. Don't do this. And if you do do this, don't throw this crap on the beach. Goes in that pile. I could put this in some kind of arts and craft thing, but I really don't want to, you know, encourage anybody to do it. So probably not. Here's another one of these. Get it off the beach. Let's see, I'm filing through. Oh, I get, I find a lot of little paint things. I find a lot of little fragments of metal. I find a lot of um, pieces of shell that really are shiny when they're wet. And then when they dry out, they, they look really dull. But when you coat something with a resin, which I've been doing for my coasters, they look like they're wet. When you sink this thing down into a piece of resin, it's going to look exactly like that. Speaking of which, are you ready for it? The tiniest abalone shell I have ever seen anywhere. And I'm so sorry it's not a full abalone shell, but that is just spectacular. See the tiny little holes? I love this thing. And it's so fragile. It's very thin. I don't know if I, you know, it's not very showing up very well how thin it is, but I am probably going to break that if I don't sink it into a piece of resin. Then I pick up things like this because the pink is just so pretty. And I keep thinking, oh, that would look pretty in a coaster with the abalone next to it. So I pick up weird things like that. This shell, the edge of this thing, and I don't know what this came off of, but I am imagining just like a beast of a clamshell. You know, the ones that you see in the movies or something. Oopsie, let's see if it's breakable. Oh no, it's done by my foot. Let's see. No, I didn't break it. After all that time tumbling around on the beach, it survived my house. <laughs> so we talked about that one. Here's something that I don't usually find, but I really like to find. And this is like milk glass. That's a piece of glass. Well, it's got a little clear piece on the edge, so I don't know. That will go on my really cool piece of glass collection because that's not a common find for me. This is like the equivalent of finding, you know, a piece of Fenton glass in your favorite antique store, and it's like $3, and, you know, it's going to sell for like 50 This, another one of these things, get it off the beach. I could have built a house with a number of those things I've pulled off the beach. Here's a piece of tile. That's got a big chip in it right there. But that's a piece of tile. That might make a pretty pendant, I think, going facing this way. And I find a lot of these. This is the bottom of a bottle. You can see the ridges. And I don't know. You can't really tell how frosted some of these are until they dry out. I always try to run my fingers on the edges if they're really sharp. Then I just take them off the beach because they're dangerous. Like this one, there's hardly any frosting on that. But it's also not real sharp. So I don't know. I'll take those off the beach anyway. I figure I wouldn't want my kid walking around on the beach with that stuff on it. So Then there's ones like this that are nice and rounded and frosted and smooth. And there's like your classic traditional piece of sea glass. This one's clear. You can't really tell because of all the you know, noise behind it. That's a clear one. Uh, there's a couple of turquoise ones in here. Here's a nice big one. Just, uh, oh, and then this weird stuff. I'm not quite sure what this is, but I find little fragment pieces of metal. And so I've put those on the backs of some of the paint chip uh, pendants. And they, you know, when you sand them down and you shape them, they turn out looking really pretty. So, you know, add some sparkle and shine to stuff. Here's another one of those ridgy, ripply things that looks really pretty in a coaster when you're done. And I found this today, which, I don't know. Usually, I used to throw stuff like this away immediately. But now I'm thinking, wow, wouldn't it be cool if I figured out some way for this, this part to be the back of a pendant and this be the front and do something really pretty and decorative on the front? It's still, you know, something that was found in the ocean, still recycled, which is kind of my goal. 
You can see how this rubber thing has holes in it and sand has gotten done in there. I think if I was going to use it, I would I would take this rubber or silicone piece off and clean all that sand out of there. I think that would be really cool. Maybe even hanging at a diagonal. I like it. I'm not throwing that away. It's going in this weird pile, but not throwing it away. Okay, on that same note, Emily's been collecting um, lobsters and making me crazy. So I have a bunch of lobsters on my front porch. You know, bits and pieces. Not whole lobsters. Not lobsters you can eat, which I love, but lobsters. This is a crab. Not sure what kind. If you know, please leave it in the comments. But this poor guy got eaten by something. I don't think this is a shed crab shell, although it could be. And I thought, well, you know, it's kind of big for a pendant, but maybe, maybe there's this could be filled with something really pretty and dramatic, and this could be the back of the pendant. I just think when this, when this dries, it could end up being a really cool color. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. From New Mexico, and we like our jewelry big and gaudy and full of turquoise and spiny oyster shell and coral. and Anyway, maybe I can figure out something to do with that guy. Here's another bottle cap. Again, very. You can see the little holes through it. It's just completely rusted out. I don't think Emily can use it. Here's a nice, pretty piece of blue. This stuff is rare. It's hard to find it. Oh, you can kind of see how pretty that blue is right there. But it does kind of glow when you're out there on the beach and you can see it pretty well. Then this thing, which just looks like kind of an ugly piece of brown stuff on this side, and then you flip it over and you go, whoa. It's a mermaid scale. That's pretty. That's going to have to go in a coaster. I'm trying to clean all my stuff up for Christmas so I can set the Christmas table. And every time I go out on the beach, I find more cool stuff. This is part of a plate. You can see the ridge of the plate back here. And this is probably the edge up here. I chipped my dinnerware. Now, if you found this at an antique store or a... Goodwill, I'm sure you wouldn't pay anything for it. But when I find it on the beach, I get kind of a cheap thrill because most of what I find is this stuff. So it's kind of fun to find something different. Anyway, kind of poking fun at the Goodwill shopping, but I am a person that likes to haunt Goodwills and antique stores. Here's another little piece of metal. I saved those and maybe I'll do something with it. I don't know. Here's a piece of plastic that, again, I think it's inside of a bottle cap. But I think when this is floating out in the ocean, it may look like a little disc jellyfish. So I pick those up when I see them. I don't want, here's another one. I don't want the critters out there to eat these. That's not good for them. Not healthy. Not good eating. Um, here's one of the shells that my friend Dan, uh, Dana, I've been mispronouncing her name for the longest time, Anyway, her name's Dana, and she calls these mermaid ears. And I thought, well, that's pretty clever, because she also calls these mermaid tears. These pieces of sea glass, this is a really nicely um, tumbled one. Um, anyway, I thought, well, no wonder the mermaids have tears. They're crying because they lost their ears. Ha, 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 ha. Get it? Anyway, here's a... I thought this was prettier out, out on the beach. Oh, there you go. Well, you can kind of see the shine to it. Sometimes I get them home and I go, you're not as pretty as I thought you were. And this I just thought would be cool sunk down on a coaster with other pretty shells around it. Because this is the inside of a much larger shell. Worn down to almost nothing. Oh, there's another mermaid ear. Let's see, are we done? Whoops, there's something I wanted to save for last. Oh, here's this. There's two different colors of green that I find out there. There's this really bright, I call it lime green. And then there's this deeper green. And I'm not sure which is which as far as the original bottle and what, you know, what would have come in this bright green versus this darker green. I think there's a lot of wine bottles and beer bottles made out of that, but this, I don't know. I don't know. I don't go into stores and like peruse their 
beer section looking for the right color bottles so I can identify where where my trash came from. And I do not know what these are. If you know what these are, let me know. I have several of these. They're little, they're like little half shell things that come off of other shells, I think. But the inside of this thing, some of them are bright pink. This one happens to be a very pretty blue. Let me see if I can get it to pop. Oh, there you go. And when, when I find something that's an unusual color, it just gets set off in a coaster so dramatically because most everything else that's in the coaster is cream colored. There's a turquoise one. Let's see how that pops. And let's see what's down here. Oh, this weird thing. I don't know what this was. It looks like a cap to something. That will probably just get thrown out, although it would look pretty cool with a piece of uh, a piece of sea glass or a piece of paint chips set down in there and a hole drilled in it and made into a pendant. Oh, I'm just, I'm insane. It has like a hole on this side, but I don't think that does, I don't think that adds anything to the artistic feature of it. Here's another bottle cap. Got it off the beach. Here's a little piece of seaweed. I've already gone through here and picked out all the seaweed that I'm going to save and, you know, I'm trying to flatten it out because it's really hard to work with if it curls up and gets all gnarly and then you can't flatten it out and then it breaks and when it dries it becomes brittle. Here's another one of those little things that has that pretty blue. And here's what they look like. It's much bigger. Here's what they look like on the other side. And I don't know what that is. Anybody knows? Let me know. Here's another lime green kind of colored piece of glass. But sometimes I find some um, deep, deep green, like a hunter green or a army green kind of color. And those are fun too. I have a, a separate jar where I keep those. I have a separate jar for the blues, separate jar for um, my little special weird things that I find. Like this guy, he'll go in my special jar just because he's funny and I've never found one like him before. This vape thingy probably should go in my special jar because it's unique. I've never found one before, but I hate vaping so badly. I'll probably just throw it away. Do not like vaping. I think it's insidious. And as somebody that's suffered from two different forms of cancer, I think treating your body like that is just really, really scary. I get it if it's something that helps you curb your appetite for a different addiction and you really are not wanting to do something that's worse for you. But vaping, I just know if you're young and you were just experimenting with this, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And if you live in my house and you do it, you're going to get in a heap of trouble. Okay, girls, are you listening? Are you listening? There's a pretty little piece of shell. Just, just really pretty. I don't know if any of you remember that movie Splash where Daryl Hannah played a mermaid and she had this spectacular necklace. When I see things like that little shell, I think of that necklace that she sold to buy that fountain for Tom Hanks because she had this spectacular necklace with all these beautiful sea treasures on it. Gorgeous shells. This one I just thought was so pretty. If I could set that, that little scallopy design on the outside edge, I thought if I could set that in a coaster, that would be really fun. Because that would, that would show up. And here's a little heart-shaped piece of shell. I love the heart-shaped pieces. I collect those. Here's another mermaid ear. Mermaid ear. Forgive my fingernails. I know they look atrocious, but I have been working with resin and sanding and everything for so long and so many weeks. There's one of the army green looking pieces that I have ruined my fingernails. And I figured until I'm done making jewelry and put the stuff away for Christmas, so I can actually, you know, get Christmas decorations out. Until that happens, my fingernails are just going to be shot. There's another dish. Maybe that's part of that same dish. Let's we'll see if we can fit them together. Nope, it's not even the same glaze or color. Two different dishes. I like finding dishes if they have a little bit of a pattern on them. Like my Smash Cancer pieces that you can... Look out on Facebook at See the Cure 
uh, Facebook page. Those I like. If I can find them on the beach and they have like a little bit of a pattern to them like that, I like them. But, the, you know, these, those are just plain white. They will probably not be kept. All right, so here's the finale. The piece de resistance. My favorite pieces. Here's a pretty red thing, part of a shell. And I will probably try to use that in a coaster just because of the color. So you put the red in there with the blue. Where'd that blue thing go? There's the red with the blue. And you can imagine how pretty that would be in a coaster. So here's some of my favorite things I found today. These are paint chips and I find these and they're just very odd. I think they come off the graffiti wall out there. And I've made some jewelry. I haven't posted any of it yet. I've posted some pictures of this stuff because I've asked if anybody knows where this stuff comes from then please comment because it's beyond me. I don't see these, like these are pretty thin. That one's spectacular. I just love all the colors on that one. Try not to wreck it because I'm looking, the, the back is kind of bland, but a little pop of green. But look at that. That's crazy cute. Anyway, um, here's one that's got the layers. You can see some of the layers. Mountain's red on that side and blackish silver on the other side. Here's one that's blue. You can see the paint peeling layers. And then more blue and green on that side and you can see the, the layers on the edge. When they dry, the layers show up better. There you go, that's a good picture of the layers. Um, here's another one. Malia found a really pretty one on the beach the other day. I was so proud of her, so impressed. That kid has an eye. I guess it helps when you're so much closer to the water or the beach. This one's interesting. It's kind of dark, but it's just very interesting. Because I'm sure it has other colors in there. If I tried to sand it when it was dry, I could probably reveal deeper colors, but Somehow the way they come out of the beach or off the beach with all of these layers, unless they're really rough and odd like this one, I just like to leave them alone. Here was the find of the day though, a marble. I've only found about five of those out on the beach and they are so fun to find. I, I just like squeal like a little kid, like, eee, I found it, I found a marble. There's another mermaid here. So, and here's a weird little... I don't know, this is a weird little piece of somebody's shell. I think a crab. I don't know, that might get chucked. It might even be in here accidentally. I'm not sure if that wasn't just stuck to something else I picked up. Here's another paint chip. Really ugly on this side. This is the color that they paint over the graffiti with to try to make it look like the brick. And yesterday when I was out there, they were filming and they had... They had all these huge bright lights, and I have a video for that. I haven't posted it yet, but I have a video. Huge bright lights pointed out the beach. And they had this big sign over by the, the bathhouse that said, Laguna Beach Cleanup Day. Look at that little teeny tiny paint chip right there, shaped like a heart. And you can see all the paint layers in it. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Isn't that cool? It's just so cool. And there's another little tiny one right there. Another shell. And then this weird piece of plastic. But it's it's actually rubber. Look at that. It's flexible. I didn't notice it was flexible when I was out there. I think this should have some really ugly backed, like this thing. It's really ugly on the back. But maybe if I glue those together... Then it could be this silver thing on this side and turquoise on the other side. Cover it in resin and make a pendant out of it. It's a sickness, people. I have an illness. It is an illness. And look at this crazy. I just pick up just lots of crazy finds up there. I just pick them up all the time. So anyway, this is... Oh, there's another paint chip. This is my, ooh, that's a pretty one too. Oh, and it's kind of heart shaped too. Well, the little hearts can sit there next to each other. 
Anyway, this is what I found today. I was out there for a couple of hours. I was actually able to walk back from beyond that breakwater point to the um, to the parking lot just by walking on the ocean. And because the the tide was so far out, it was all exposed sand and rocks. It's kind of dicey, like walking over those rocks, but I did it. So anyway, um, there's my weird stuff. Yeah, that's kind of a weird little haul of oddities. And here's my more normal, cool stuff. So, thanks for watching. I may go over and um, try to video real quick some of the coasters that have some of these things in them so you can see what, what they look like when they're finished and made into something. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe and share with anybody that you think would be interested because this is what I do for fun. This is what I did to get myself out of the house when I was recovering. Um, you know, it's, it's just fun and it's relaxing. I mean, who, who can't relax out walking on the beach? I mean, I'm sorry, but my dad hunted arrowheads in the desert like every Saturday, as long as I can remember. And now I get it. It must have just been very relaxing for him to walk out there in the sunshine. He always said, think of me on a pretty fall day. And so it certainly was a pretty fall day today. And I did think of him while I was out there. Anyway, love you. God bless. You guys all have a great evening. And I'm going to see if I can tack another video onto the end of this with the, uh, with the coasters that I've made. Okay, so I thought if I didn't do this right now, I would probably never do it. But here's one of the coasters that I made with the seashells. These have not been posted anywhere. I was posting, oh, look for these, they're coming, but I haven't done it yet. I need to number them and photograph them and do all of that fun stuff. But anyway, this one's interesting. It's got some things in it that I don't even know what they're, but this is a hard surface. This is resin. There's the back of it. Here's the front. You can set a drink on there. This thing will probably last forever because it's jewelry grade resin. That's kind of hard to say. This right here is a sea urchin. I know that. I found that little guy out on the beach. But see how these, like here's one of those little things I was telling you that's blue right there. Here's another piece of sea urchin. These. This is a shell from Cabrillo. This is probably from Cabrillo. I'm thinking this whole thing is from Cabrillo. I like um, this little shell right here. You can see how it got worn down and just the open part of the shell is showing. This one, you can see how a bubble got trapped in there. It's kind of funny. Hello in there. Nobody in there. Oh, here's another piece of sea urchin. Then these little shells you find all over the beach out at Cabrillo. So that's that one. Oh, and this beach is from Florida. Went to Florida this year and I found those and I couldn't tell you right now which beach that was, but I think I have it written down somewhere. See how these do look like mermaid ears? They just really, they crack me up. So that's the first one. I have, I think eight or 10 of these. This one has some fake pearls in it that I found at Joanne Fabrics. Ha ha ha, did not find those at the beach. Uh, but I thought they were pretty. But it looks kind of like like a photograph, except when you hold it up, you can see through it. And there's the back. I put some glitter in there because it just adds to it. And, you know, everything's better with glitter. This has a piece of tape stuck to it because there's a sharp piece right there that I need to file off. See that little bump? So that's a reminder to me to file that off before I put little silicone feet on it. There's a piece of sea urchin. There's one of those ripply shells I was telling you about and how cool they look when you put them down in here. This shell I know was from um, Florida. Some of my Florida finds. This one, a bubble got caught. You can see the little bubble in there. See, put that in there. But that's okay. Normally when you're working with resin, you don't want bubbles, but you know what, if you're dealing with the beach, why not? It's the water. There's beach out there. I love this shell. I just thought that turned out beautiful. And this one, normally I try to put shells at the top up, like this one right here, but this 
The bottom of it was just so pretty with that design, I couldn't resist. So that's that one. And then this one, which again has a sea urchin. This shell is from Cabrillo, and I do not know the name of that. I'm sure anybody who's watching this probably knows, but me with my chemo brain, I can't remember. Um, you see these all over the back of it is just rounded over. These are more mermaid ears that have been tumbled by the surf. This is a really thin, very thin piece of, you can see my finger through it, very thin piece of that um, shimmery uh, seashell, what do they call it, mother of pearl maybe? They used to make, uh, not wind chimes, but sun catchers and stuff out of that, and they'd have a bunch of them strong. Lamps used to be made out of this stuff. Anyway, I found that one on the beach. And these two shells are from Florida. And I try to turn all these pearls where the little hole isn't showing up, but some of them, you put resin in there and they just move. Isn't that funny? That little piece down there looks blue when you turn the, that little tiny piece looks blue when you turn the camera certain ways and not when you turn the camera other ways. But I love them. I'll put them all three out here. I have a bunch of these and I haven't posted them yet, but this is fun. This is how, if you don't have a hobby and you're recovering from cancer and, or you are trying to um, get yourself out of the house, you can go rock hounding. You can collect leaves and flowers and press them and do pressed work. You can do that in resins and pendants and you can just collect them and archive them and catalog them and try to discover what they were. There's a lot of stuff out there in nature when you're out walking around trying to get your strength back that can um, be fun to look at and collect. Just be careful that you don't collect, like in my case, I don't collect any shells that, are, that have a critter in them. None of these had anything living in them. These are so worn down, nothing could live in those. These are half shells. These sea urchins were broken. I don't collect anything that was living. If it has a critter in it, I throw it back into the ocean because I think those little critters might dry out on the beach. So I, I uh, make sure I protect the environment. And if you're collecting flowers and twigs and things like that, just don't collect them in like national parks or something where you're not allowed or <laughs> your neighbor's yard, which might get you in trouble with your neighbor. Who knows? But if you don't like your neighbor, maybe you don't care. Maybe you wouldn't mind making them mad. I gotta zoom in on that little blue piece again. I just like it. Yeah, I like that little blue one. But see, I try to put all the different colors. You got blues and pinks and there's some pinks, just all kinds of stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. All those treasures that you saw in the previous segment, this is where they end up. And the sand is crushed shell. And I gotta, I gotta admit that I buy that because I'm not, I'm not gonna sit around crushing shell. That's just too much work for me. Too much. Let's see if we can zoom in. And the glitter, of course, was purchased. And the glitter originally was spread out, but when you put the resin in there, sometimes it congregates. And I don't care. It still looks pretty from the side. And it just barely shows through, just to add a little bit of glam. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Hit like and subscribe. If you want to see um, my other creations, go to See the Cure, S-E-A, The Cure, at Facebook. There's a page there. And all the things I'm selling for Relay for Life this year are listed, um, except these. These are not up yet. If you want these listed, put a note in the comments and say, list them, list them. We're interested. Anyway, I'm hoping to get them out before Christmas because they make great Christmas presents, but I'm starting to get really tired. And I'll just do a really quick pan over of my workspace here. It's just crazy town. Just crazy town. This is, and this is, with most of it already packed up, I'm packing it up to put it away for the holiday. This is a box of inclusions. These are, these are paint chips that I found on the beach that were, there's a really pretty one, that I just put the final coat of resin on. So I'm pretty excited about these. 
Here's a key ring I'm making for myself out of a piece of fiberglass with paint chips on the back, the heart-shaped ones, and then some paint chips on the other side. Right now you can't see them because it's sitting on them. Here's some sand dollars. There's a sand dollar with a cancer ribbon on it. Um, over here I have some, when I have leftover resin, I pour some of these guys. These are the backs, so they really don't look that spectacular. But the fronts of these are quite awesome. They're alcohol ink pendants. And if you don't know what that means, you can look up alcohol ink on YouTube and find all kinds of videos of people showing you how to do them. These are my candy pendants that I'm making. These are candy sprinkles. I will have those four and I think one or two more for sale at all these events. It's just fun. I just have so much fun doing this. These are going, these have snowflakes in them. I don't know if you can see them through there, but this is the back of the coaster. And when you flip it over, those, um, those little snowflakes you see buried down in there will be on the top and the blue glitter will be in the background. And there's huge blue glitter and really fine and then small. So there's three types of blue glitter in there. Kind of trying to make it look like a winter wonderland in a coaster. Anyway, this is my mess. This is my mess. This is where I, yeah, ice resin. That's my favorite resin. This is where I do my work. There's my Dremel for drilling holes and all this stuff. My lighter for popping bubbles in my resin. And of course, paintbrush junk, rags. Some of my broken dishes that I didn't drill holes in yet. A little thing of sea glass. Um, oh, let's see if I can really horrify you with the sea glass. That sea glass. That sea glass. That sea glass. This is sea glass. These are all paint chips. And here's a pan of seaweed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my crazy because I certainly feel crazy when I look at it like this and I'm showing it to people. So y'all have a great evening again. I will see you later. Bye.